so we've been hit by lightning again second time but the damage we're not sure yet till we get there all those zebra no good so we made it we are back in Costa Rica remember Tom He's back on the boat, and a couple days ago he reported that the boat got struck by lightning. And so he can't, he thinks we've lost all of the Raymarine stuff, the inverter, and the Victron stuff basically. So that sucks, but we're gonna go and do some investi investigating tonight, or tomorrow. So we'll have to see the extent of the damage, but this could be tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. We may have lost the autopilot. Could be a really, really shitty situation, but there's nothing we can do. What's done is done. Jamie, got anything intelligent to add? <laughs> nah, nothing. Just that I'm tired. With Hurricane Irma, boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a Hurricane Damage Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? We left the boat in rainy season in Costa Rica. That's the risk you take. Golfito is an especially high lightning area and we knew the risk was there and lo and behold, looks like we've got a direct strike. Two other boats got done as well. Three boats, one night. That may uh, delay the plans to get out of Golfito as well. So <laughs> it is what it is. I think no one got hurt and the boat's not sunk. So, um, that's the good news. Morning everyone. We've made it back on the boat and it is an absolute mess. The boat's just incredibly moldy. This is the wet season in Costa Rica and the boat stinks. So we've already just been pulling everything up, taking it all out in the sun. Even like stuff like this, that, that mold is like inside the glass. It's not pretty. Couldn't really sleep last night, it was so moldy. So we've got to take care of this. We've already done a shop this morning, bought a bunch of bleach. We're going to just tidy the boat up a little bit, get a bit organized, and then we're going to start troubleshooting this lightning situation. Tom's back. How's it? Howdy, mate. How was it uh, hanging out with David Sheen? <laughs> it was good. It was actually good. Yeah, we did a sail from Panama to Texas. Took like a month and a half. All right, so two things broken so far. Engine and one winch down. You now we had fuel issues at the beginning, sorted that out, and then um, otherwise, yeah, no, it, was, it went pretty smoothly. I just went up on the bow and the deck light was well, on the on the deck blowing so the lightning popped that out same thing happened last time we got struck um i've obviously got to do a rigging inspection at some point make sure nothing got fried or zapped check all the tangs and the the shrouds and everything up the top there the wind vane is still there so that's something none of that's working a monitoring system that's gone we'll go through it but we've basically lost everything uh, the voltage on the lithium is good, 13.2, but I don't. We got to check individual batteries, make sure each one is working, that the BMS inside of those hasn't got fried. We've got no AC power on the boat, so that means um, the inverter is probably fried. That's an expensive piece of kit. Um, we haven't tested the windlass. The engine started, which is great news. Just wriggle the. No oh, windless. Just replaced that windless motor. Brand new 17, 1700 watt motor. Oh man. Here we 
everything's on. That's really, really bad news. No windlass. Wasn't expecting that one. That's a big chunky motor. So. It's just not even working. The breakers are on. My Tom's just checking. I think those winches are like $10,000. This is all very depressing, but it is what it is. What can you do? What can you do? What's done is done. Engine sounds good. Yeah. How does it feel to be back? Once we sort it out, I'll feel better. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of understand that that's gone and that a lot of the lights aren't working. I have to get a whole bunch of LED lights. The list goes on and on and on. The neighbor over there, he saw it happen. So he was sitting in his spot there and saw the bolt hit parlay. And then I think that big blue boat over there got hit and another boat. That monotone just there, apparently. Franklin just turned up. He's the guy that was cleaning the bottom, cleaning the hull miles away. $70. He charges and he scrapes all the barnacles off the bottom and this is literally crocodile infested water so I don't know how he does it. There he is right there. I don't know how he hasn't been attacked. Hey Franklin! Todo bien? Todo bien? Todo This was legit when we got it. Oh my beard! <laughs> Your pants are funciona. Okay. Thank you. <sighs> Alright. We've just had a problem arise. When we tried to start the windlass, the whole boat lost 12 volts. So got no idea what that means. But that's not a good thing. <sighs> Charge controllers are all flashing in a weird way. Okay, just gonna start checking voltages everywhere. Okay, so the inverter is not not running, no lights. It looks like one charge controller is doing its thing right now. The other three are flashing weird. This one's not on, and we've lost the Servo GX, which would explain why the touchscreen isn't working. Should be at least 13 volts right here. 13.3. So there's voltage from the batteries to this big distribution bus here. Oh wow. Look at this. All of this black carbon. That does not look good, look at that guys. All burnt. One of the uh, probes is broken off. Hey, hey, hey. 13.3, okay. The voltage is coming up to here. These are the lights. Turn that on. Some fans came on. Don't know why. All I actually did was unplug this, so maybe that was the problem. I'd like to see if we can get the Serbo GX working. That's everything plugs into that and tells me what's going on. And then that goes up to that touchscreen display to give me the percentage and, and all of that stuff. I disconnected the fuse for the Serbo GX and uh, it came back to life. The problem with this stuff is that um, quite often after a strike, you'll have this stuff kind of work temporarily, but after a month or two or three, everything starts to go a bit funky because it's just had so much voltage come through it all. Let's go to check that touch screen. Oh, you fucking beauty. So it's only seeing two sets of panels. It's showing the solar, but nothing going in and out. So that's all done with the shunt. So let's check that. It's flashing away. Okay, I managed to reset the smart shunt and tap into the Bluetooth interface and I'm doing a firmware update. If this works and that can talk to that, then we might be able to see how much percent battery we have left. 
All right, got some good news. Now the monitoring system is saying we've got 100 amps of charge happening right now from the solar panels. Now the winch is working, but I haven't done anything. What's made that work all of a sudden? All I did was unplug this. This is getting messy. See that one lights up, but none of this. Put the fridges back on in the water pump. None of those light up. Anchor lights are almost definitely gone. Panel lights not going to work because that's screwed. Bilge pump still works. That's good. Unbelievably. So this this stuff here looks to be zapped. Okay, I'm just gonna go through and measure the voltage on each individual battery. So I'll just disconnect the positive here, for example, and measure the voltage across this lug and the negative 13.42. So that means that battery is working. If it was saying zero, then the BMS would have shut that battery off. So I'll go and do that to each one. Okay, so every single battery, when I disconnected it individually, they were holding uh, like 13.42 or 13.43 volts. Um, so none of the BMSs had shut the battery down. So I believe they're okay. They're doing what they're meant to do for now. I am just kind of making this up as I go. Um, but I believe that is the case. Because <laughs> uh, the internal BMS would, would shut the battery. If it got fried or if it, it, it uh, experienced too much voltage or whatever, the BMS inside the battle born would shut it, shut it off. It would just open the circuit so if I put the multimeter on it and it got zero volts something inside the battery's gone wrong but if they're all holding 13.44 43 um, they're all good that's what I believe anyway let me know if I'm wrong so one thing I did seek advice on was the inverter I spoke to a Victron technician and he said we just did a bit of troubleshooting and the inverter is definitely fried and there's nothing I can do about it. There's no fuses inside it or anything. I've opened it up. There's four motherboards inside it and one of them is cooked or all of them are cooked. Luckily, I've got our backup one over here. I'll throw that across, install it, and then we'll try program it for our system. Okay, I think I've just wired up the inverter, the spare one. Let's give it this little test. Okay, turning it on. Something went click. We have a green light inverter on. Perfect. I'm sweating my ass off. It is so hot in Costa Rica compared to New Zealand anyway. So I will flip this breaker on. Okay, come to here. One twenty. You beauty. Stick the breaker on. Oh, got a problem. It's not talking to this. So that Servo GX could be faulty. But let's just see if we have power or not. Boiling the kettle with AC power. Okay, inverter's working. I'm gonna stop that because we don't have all of our solar hooked up. Because we've got a few charge controllers that are cooked. But that's good news. I'm gonna turn it off now and tomorrow we'll program it. But the net the old uh, the spare inverter is working. But it's not talking talking to this. So I might have to try a different network cable anyway that's enough for today i'm dying 
Time for a beer. What a day. That was mostly good news, all things considered. We'll see you tomorrow. Morning guys. So back at it. This morning the guys have pulled all the floor plates up off the um, port and starboard hulls. And we're checking all the through hulls. We're just making sure that there's no delamination around any of the through hulls um, with the fiberglass. And making sure that lightning didn't damage the actual hull of the boat at all. We've had a diver check the outside of the anode where the strike was most likely dissipated out into the sea. And we're checking the cable that goes from the anode from the chain plate. So the lightning would come down the rig, down the shroud um, where the chain plate is. It goes over this hallway and to here. So, and we're also just checking everything in the engine room because that's grounded as well. And the sail drive goes into the ocean, obviously. So that's another place where it would have wanted to escape. While we're here, we should just exercise each valve as well. Make sure it can be closed. Here we have the chain plate. So I'm not overly happy, happy with the size of that cable. Look at it. That is tiny. So I might look at putting something more significant and just running it straight down to that anode. Okay, while well, they got the floorboards up, um, we're testing the tank water level gauge and both of them are fried looks like um, we're getting absolutely nothing on the gauge itself it's getting voltage gets its voltage from here and uh, I don't know whether it's the gauges themselves that are fried or the resistor inside the level sensor here so it's getting voltage but no action by the way guys, these charge controllers yesterday, um, they were flashing all sorts of weird lights in the area. Um, they had errors on them. The way I got them going again was just to simply take all the cables out and just put them back in one by one and they seem to be working. So it looks like for the Victron we need a new inverter, two new charge controllers and the Serbo GX because a bunch of the ports aren't working that um, the VE Direct that talk to everything. So not all of it is showing up on our touchscreen, but that in terms of the Victron is excellent news. Battleborn seem to be good, um, also good news. So now I'm gonna move on to the Rain Marine system because right now nothing is working. So we'll see what's happening there.